It's time for another installment of the basics and on today's show I want to go over a small list of cards that you should keep out of your deck when you're building for the Star Trek customizable card game. Now I might have future episodes that detail more cards but these are a selection of the cards that I can think of right off the bat that should be kept out of play. So let me show you. Now unfortunately even in card games as awesome as the Star Trek CCG there are a lot of cards that you really don't need to have in your deck and some of them are outright pointless. So let's get started. The easiest one being if you're playing Federation don't bother with shuttlecraft. They suck. Weapons 2, shields 2, weapons 1, shields 3. No. If you need an auxiliary craft that can be crewed by anyone, use a Danube class runabout or any of the runabouts from the Deep Space Nine expansion. Better range, better shields, better weapons. Need I say more? The only doorway card that makes this list is the secret compartment. It plays on a ship or facility and if it's controlled by an opponent and your acquisition is present you can probe different things. The problem is if there's no Ferengi in the game and your opponent or you is not playing anything to do with Bajoran or Cardassian whereas they wouldn't use a station and yes you can put these on ships but you won't see this a lot in a, in a deck built for ships this becomes a pointless card because in all the years I've played I've seen it used on facilities and never on ships so yeah perhaps the two most pointless cards in the game are Barber Pole and Mott's Advice. Any personnel that gains the skill of barbering, that doesn't do anything. It doesn't help in the game. There's nothing that needs barbering. And as for the Barber Pole event card, you play a Barber Pole. Congratulations, you've accomplished nothing. It's probably the most pointless card in the game. I might be able to find one that's more pointless, but as far as this goes, don't even bother. I think the creators of the game put it in there as a big joke just to get a rise out of us. Drought Tree. Score 7 bonus points by placing the tree on a planet mission you just completed. But if there's anybody around the planet or on the planet like your opponent, it can be nullified. So don't even bother. The Traveler Transcendence. I've mentioned this event on other shows. Placing it beside another player's deck so they draw an extra card, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I've had this done to me and it actually helped me in more ways than anything. So don't even bother. You don't want to give your opponent a leg up on the competition. The Clown Beneath the Mask from the Voyager set. To get past one personnel must have total attributes less than 23. That's not hard to find, especially if it's a universal personnel. They have low attributes to begin with. So, pointless. Matriarchal Society cannot get past unless two female away team members are, are present. A lot of us, especially if you're playing Federation, you have several female away team members because they add to the attributes of the overall crew. So, for example, my Federation deck alone, just on the Enterprise E, I have Dr. Crusher, Deanna Troy, and I think I have another female away team pre uh, member. So, Again, a pointless dilemma that's too easy to get past. Iconian computer weapon, unless science present, reboot by discarding all non personnel cards in hand and replenish from the top of the draw deck. Everybody has science in their damn deck, and lots of it, and on their ships. At least two or three, so one's not going to be a problem. I don't even use this dilemma anymore. I haven't in years. Tachyon detection grid. Find me someone that has four or more ships in a deck because it's like I said in previous shows it takes a while to get ships out. So again a pointless interrupt unless you have a really large fleet for what reason somebody should tell me. Ship seizure. You're more than likely to destroy your opponent's ships not leave them empty sitting in orbit doing nothing. So again pointless. And the last two cards deal with artifacts. Rissican Flute, uh, I don't want to get into this. You get bonus points for each of your music personnel in play, but not many 
people that are building kick-ass decks worry about the music attribute on their personnel. You don't see a lot of that, if any. So, pointless artifact. And the City of Bahala. I'm not getting into the lore on this card. Unless you're dealing heavy with Bajorans, and even then it's still a bit of a pointless card because it doesn't do a lot. And a Disruptor Overload won't kill it, but any card that can kill an artifact will kill it. So again, why even bother? I'm not complaining about these cards so much as I'm warning you to keep them out of your decks because I, as I explained by showing you each card, a lot of them just don't do anything or enough of anything to be effective. Like, for example, the Iconian computer weapon and, and dilemmas like that in Matriarchal Society. When the Star Trek CCG first came out and it was only next gen, you needed some dilemmas of any kind to have in your deck because there was a lack of cards, but in the subsequent expansions, it made a lot of those dilemmas, those simple dilemmas, null and void because better dilemmas came out. So, there you go. And as I've already said, why Barber Bowl? Why? That's all for today.